स्वभावचिन्मयानंदम कृपा पूर्णम जगत्पतिम हरिषडवर्गजेतारम नित्यानंद गुरुम बजे स्वभावचिन्मयानंदम which can really add to some <laughs> some more clicks somebody very intelligent just empty card Swamiji, could you please provide an insight on relationship between the person's horoscopes and karma? Even though for, from time immemorial, the so-called logical people and the atheists were abusing, disrespecting the traditional astrology. Secretly, they were always consulting astrologers. Even though many people try to abuse or disrespect, the science still holds its power, its influence on human beings. In India, the report says 93% of the people read or study their horoscopes regularly to before taking any big decisions not just marriage before taking any big decisions surely there is a science being even though as usual anything which expands certain limit goes beyond certain limit will lose its originality will start getting diluted there was little dilution in this science also, but that does not mean the science itself is a lie. Understand this one example, then you will be able to understand, connect with the astrology, the science of astrology. It's like a, for one moment, in camera, when the cover moves, whatever was outside gets printed on the film, then you can develop that film, it will become photograph. Second time, you can't use that same film, what first moment, what gets recorded, only that will be there in the film. Same way, the moment you come out, the moment your consciousness enters into the body, the energy level of the cosmos gets printed in that, in that consciousness. Your inner space gets a print of the cosmic energy level based on the time of the birth and the position of the nine major energy centers. I wanted one more understanding to be internalized by you all. The astronomical planets are not astrological planet energies. Even though number may be same, the astrological planets are energies. For example, planet Earth is here. We again use the paper to draw and show you. This understanding will really help. No, 
planetary this year. Different different grahas are there. Please visualize this as eccentric circuits <laughs> and this as some planets. Okay. This is sun. When we say here in that in our temple, if you see there will be nine planetary energies, statue deities will be there, they will be worshipping. When we say sunny graha, that is not exactly Saturn. Consider this as a Saturn, a particular energy a pull and push is there always between the grass. The energy which comes out of the Saturn does not completely come and influence the planet Earth. In between, something will be added, something will be deleted. Different clash, energy clash will be there. For example, 100 unit push energy comes from the Saturn and if 20 unit pulling energy comes from the Buddha, naturally it will be neutralized. It will become 80. And suddenly here you will see, Sukra may add 30 unit, then it will become 110. When it reaches, by the time it reaches the planet Earth, it may get deviated for some time. Then it may come down to 80 or 50. Whatever finally reaches, that is what we call Sunny, Saturn energy, understand? It's a very subtle science. The same, same Saturn will not have same influence over planet Earth continuously. If he moves, the total calculation of the pull or push will differ. If you move, even sometime I have seen, within 12 days, the whole energy will be different. Whole energy will be different. If the astronomical planets and astrological planets are same, then the energy difference will not be there. But it is not same. It is not same. It is the totality of the energy reaches to the planet Earth. Maybe going, when we say Saturn, the major influence in that energy flow was from Saturn. When we say Buddha, it is not that only Buddha is radiating. That energy which came out of Buddha, by the time it reaches the planet Earth, goes through some 5-6 alteration. So many influences gets added and deleted. Then the energy reaches the planet Earth. The different energy positions clearly decides the cosmic energy level during your birth, during the time of the birth. Based on that, we will be able to easily predict the course of your life. Understand? Not exact incidence. Exact if somebody claims they can predict exact incidents and I have seen all foolish ads in the newspaper. Three days your problem will be solved. <laughs> I am really surprised. I thought of it. Anyhow, I don't think incidents them can be predicted. Only a course of, kind of a rough course only can be predicted. Incidents are too minute details and you do have a freedom, understand? Even if a minute incidence like a which chair you will sit, if they, that can be predicted, you don't have a freedom. You don't have a freedom. 
you do have a freedom whether you can you have a freedom to decide whether to sit here or not or listen here or not or understand or not all those things you have a freedom maybe the major actions major course like whether you will become enlightened or not maybe those things can be predicted but the small decision only principles can be predicted not the policies policies you have a individual freedom having an idea about horoscope your own horoscope will give you many time intelligence and acceptance to decide about your life intelligence to make decision acceptance about the inevitable things so according to me a seeker should have little bit basic intelligence about their own horoscope better to read some books and have an idea than going to some person who is new who doesn't know in those days fortunately we had family astrologers i know my own family had an astrologer who is very precise who is very one more thing if that guy is a family astrologer who knows completely your family then he can interpret the energy flows he can easily interpret and guide you he can be a counselor also personal counselor also he had we had a fortune of having that kind of a astrologer who is profession who is a experienced astrologer who knows the signs our knows the family well so easily can do the job of counseling at least whatever i heard from my parents not even once is prediction failed is prediction failed it's a very surprising is only one prediction failed that he predicted that i will die at the age of 80 i took sanyas <laughs> that is the only thing <laughs> uh, failed of course sanyas is practically rebirth otherwise such a precise knowledge so try to read one or two books it will really give you a opening and glimpse and it will be really exciting when i actually when i started studying it was very exciting you can play lot with it because there is every uh, the astrological sutras actually encourage your visualization and power to connect things it really helps you you mentioned that you had 72 topics when you oh, there is a question from yesterday somebody is asking would it be possible to name all the 72 topics you wanted to discuss only in some book somebody is asking about food we don't know who has touched the raw fruits vegetables between the harvest and the shop should we not eat salads made from store brought vegetables does washing purify them or is cooking is the best way washing and energizing say offering it to the deities are nothing but purifying process that purifies the food completely offering it as an nivedya or offering it to the divine then eating will really purify and change the very quality of the food very energy of the food still even i personally tried this experiment i told some of our uh, the people who make the laddus in tirupati some of them are our devotees i told them to separate few pieces before it goes to offering and after it goes to offering and comes back really i tell you honestly i have tried at least two three times surely taste is different i don't know what goes on in the garbha mandir 
what Venkateshwara does, but the quality, the taste is totally different. I can very clearly tell. The taste is different. Understand? Surely, energizing does a big job, even though logically this is very difficult to relate. See, till the Dr. Emoto, Japanese scientist, till he proved the power of our parts over the water, we can't imagine in 15 minutes you can pollute water. You don't need anything else except your mind <laughs> to pollute water. So just like uh, air pollution, water pollution, we should say now conscious pollution. <laughs> he proved the consciousness, the world can be polluted by the ordinary mental thoughts. So power of the mind over the matter is proved by Emoto. Not once, 300 different experiments and every experiment says, proves the power of the mind over the matter. I think it is a, whether we believe it or not, the ceremonies like a purifying or offering and all, that's a big job. Somebody is asking, can you please give some guideline on raising children as there is no Gurukul system in this country. We don't have Gurukul, but we already started the weekend classes. I initiated the class, first class I myself conducted. For half an hour I had the patients to sit with them. <laughs> <laughs> sit with the kids. <laughs> because half an hour they were shy. After that they opened up, then I decided that I can't sit anymore with them. <laughs> as long as they were shy, I was able to sit with them. <laughs> The moment I saw they now <laughs> opened up and now they are ready, I said, now class ends, please go. <laughs> Anyhow, but uh, we do have regular classes. This weekend we were not able to have because of the weekend workshop. But from next weekend, we do have regular classes. It will be happening. Bring them, surely we will at least do the damage control. We may not be able to bring them up as we want. At least we will do the damage control. Hmm? What is the trick to get rid of fantasy on childhood front and keep current relationship happy? <laughs> I tell you a very simple trick. Meet that same childhood friend now for two, three days, it will disappear. <laughs> really? The fantasy remains as fantasy because you did not see the reality. Just see that same, see, in the childhood, not only he becomes your fantasy, you, you would have become fantasy for many persons. Because they do not have the real idea about you now. See, in those, at the, in the childhood, he was also, because he was except, he was just expressing the joy and ecstasy, he made a deep impression in you. Because you are ex expressing the excitement and joy, you made a deep impression on the other person, on so many persons. Now, if you see the same person, you will understand, the same dull fellow like me. <laughs> and if you, if they meet you, they will realize, are the same fool. <laughs> there is nothing to be fantasizing. There is nothing worthy of fantasies in that person. Suddenly you will see the reality and the childhood fantasy will disappear. That is why I always tell people, it is very nice to attend alumni meetings if you are not enlightened. If you are not enlightened, good to attend alumni meetings. Alumni means the, where the colleges gather, where the childhood friends gather to meet once in a while. So, this is the best te technique. Go and see that one or, uh, once or, just once or twice. Then all the all your fantasies will disappear. You will come to reality. Should we avoid group meditation with an unenlightened leader? I can say, if the technique is from enlightened being, then it won't do big harm. But if the technique also from an unenlightened person, if the unenlightened person tries to add or delete, if he starts commenting, then please avoid. 
please avoid what about yoga training you are asking same with yoga the system is from enlightened consciousness have it the system is not from enlightened consciousness if that person is adding or deleting us doing his own masala job then relax <laughs> i have tears of revelation and bliss when i am in your presence you have suddenly changed my junky iron ladder into a golden one which will never rust i have cried with joy with numerous clicks you offered in the last 8 days of your discourses especially the one which attempts to clarify the reality that everyone and everything is extension of one another yesterday with the same pool of love overflowing in my heart i gave you up after taking the blessings from you <laughs> and this act of mine was brought out brought to my attention as being arrogant see it was not arrogant if uh, i have people it will be it will not be a problem if people start giving a tight hug just imagine 400 people giving me a tight bear hug for you i am the only one person hugging if you imagine 400 people giving me a tight bear hug and especially if this is the only chance they get to come near me so nobody misses the chance to and moreover i don't know whether there is a spiritual superstition going around if you squeeze more you will get more energy <laughs> that is the reason we tell people please you do not squeeze swami ji will argue but you do not squeeze actually if you see the early devotees i would have allowed them to them also to hug because they will not squeeze they know but the new persons i really uh, tell them please i'll hug you you can just have your hands but do not just use the chance <laughs> that is the reason we tell and uh, nothing else that's the reason there is no other disgrace or disrespect or anything what you have done is not wrong but when too many people do physically not only that during energy darshan body is very subtle that is the reason we tell people please you be little careful that's all there's nothing no other uh, technical reason it is just a simple social reason in india what all people do you don't know no really now just just before coming to this trip i went to inaugurate one of our ashram in namakkal one guy came and he just literally bit my feet my finger and the toes he bit and there was even little blood and Uh, later on people asked him are why did you do that i also asked him why did you do this he said some he will always remember me <laughs> oh god <laughs> that day something like 22000 people had darshan if all 22000 try that i should remember them <laughs> i think uh, nobody can remember me <laughs> or i can't remember so <laughs> and another one uh, big danger uh, that is the state uh, in the first list of hiv infection anyhow there was no problem uh, we took care that neither that person was infected and we had we also had then i had to go through all the basic medical checkup completely <laughs> to take care and ensure and all this unnecessary headache see we had a first aid immediately then i had to uh, take, take care of them anyhow medical care and all those things are also secondary but it at least stops half an hour one hour work half an hour one hour next darshan so that's the reason we tell people that uh, please try to be little practical same as in india for respect for gods and the gods to be it would be great that the temple carpets 
this dream in regularly oh god that's great mm. Mm. you are telling all the temples should be carpeted <laughs> mm. understand in this country the carpeting is possible i don't think in india it is possible in india all the temples are granited and ne, these are just ordinary things you can maybe you can talk to the indian government and tell them to do <laughs> master just a note born again and again and again every time i think this is the ultimate you you give another birth chance every second ongoing process when i am in your presence or absence i was playing cool yesterday after nitya dhyan which was intense saw light after light after darshan big explosion i felt sleepy like no other sleep like experienced before i almost did not make it home felt sleep three times on the road driving i do not know how i made it home safe and alive bro sleeping i slept night day till 4 pm today oh god then it is not sleep <laughs> light flooding my body kept me calm and deeply mesmerized in sleep mm, wonderful this is not sleep you can say it's a glimpse of turiya mm. in the east it's a wonderful question in the west most seekers of truth have thought the channeled information published by many new age leaders to be path to enlightenment as decades go by seekers learn tens of meditations and healing styles with more and more phobias and self doubts as well in the east the self is put in jail of sin and shame are controlled by half gurus that use magic to gather masses but you in a very short time shown the breakdown of phobias and religions would you speak to these three ways people take as seekers and teachers wonderful first thing nobody is responsible neither the gurus who are channeling some ideas and writing the new age gurus nor neither the the western new age gurus who bring out channeled books nor the indian gurus the half gurus what you say i don't want to say full gurus half gurus neither of them are responsible for our thing understand if you are waiting to be cheated you will feel connected only the person who is interested in cheating you you are inviting them it's not that they are inviting you you are inviting them in your life one thing i always tell people take up only if something is straight open based on supported by the tradition supported by thousands of years of knowledge we call it apta pramana a great scriptures like upanishads full proof time tested when there is no support or the reference or the base principles from those scriptures then please be aware and avoid because many time people when they get into delirium and fever what they write that becomes holy scriptures <laughs> now really they go into delirium and something they come out and whatever they spell out or write and that becomes holy scripture and leads the whole world into deliritic state delirious state i can only give this one scale maybe this can guide you that technique or that person after you come in contact with that person initial introduction or initial exposure does it add intelligence awareness and bliss to you if this three quality even one quality increases in you go behind that person surely you will be helped or in this three 
If you are not growing in this tree, forget about him. Even if he brings fortune and wealth in your life, it will only be danger for you. It will only be danger for you. Even if he brings fortune or wealth in your life, it will be like a yaksha spot. I will tell this small story, an yaksha spot. I love to tell this story. <laughs> Understand? One guy, one barber, every day, he will go and shave the face of the king and receive his salary, one gold coin and come back. King will be waiting to see him just because of the joy this barber radiates. This guy is fully contented guy. Never asked any favor to the king. See, shaving is a practically personal service. Means every day he is touching the king. So, when you are in such a close proximity, naturally you can take advantage of the uh, nearness. But he never asked anything. Radiating contentment. Just fulfillment. Naturally, if you want to impress a politician, be fulfilled, he will be impressed by you. I tell you, no. These are all few things. If you want to impress a poor idiot, show your wealth, he will be impressed. If you want to impress a fool, show your knowledge, he will be impressed. If you want to impress a politician, show your contentment, he will be impressed. Because that is what he does not have. He has everything. He has enough cunningness, enough display, enough of all qualities. You can't display anything and attract attention of politician or inspire, influence him. You can impress him if you show your contentment, fulfillment. That is the way Buddha influenced all the politicians of India. During Buddha's time, there was not a single guy, single king who did not become Buddhist. Who did not become Buddhist. Practically, 90% of the king, India became Buddhist. Because of the contentment he was radiating. And he was just showering or expressing through his being. The whole, the whole group of politicians became his disciples. So this guy, for him this barber is almost like a little Buddha. Every morning he feels seeing him is an auspicious thing. He will be waiting to see. And never ever the barber asked for pay raise. Suddenly, one week continuously, the barber's face was not so contented, so peaceful, so fulfilled. First thing the king asked is, did you get the golden jar from Yaksha? The barber was sharp, sharp. He said, yes sir, how do you know? Then king tells the story, listen here. I will tell you the story, what the Yaksha would have done. You would have been walking under that particular banyan tree. Some of these banyan trees are the place where gods and Yakshas both come and sit. <laughs> and you would have heard the voice, do you need money? Gold jar filled with golden coins. Yakshas, the barber said, yes sir. Did that voice show you a particular place below the tree and ask you to dig? He said, yes, sir. When you dig, you saw the big jar almost full. He said, yes, sir. Then what did you do? Then he said, now I will tell you the story, what I did. I took the jar to the house. I saw it's almost full. Only few coins are needed to fill it. So, I thought one day I will not spend the coin which I took from you as a salary. I put it in that uh, uh, jar. Just I wanted to have a jar filled with golden coins. Now some 10, 15 coins are less. So I put the coin in that. That day we both of us managed from our savings, whatever we had. The same way, for a few more days we just put the coins. How many days I put the coins, again I see the jar is not full, there is little emptiness, what to do? <laughs> Suddenly I saw, my wife has become very angry with me, because I am not allowing her to use the money, and my kids are angry with me, 
Now I am caught in the rut. Neither uh, one side my desire to have a full jar of gold coins. The other side, I have to fulfill my regular responsibilities. Then king said, "Understand? Just now go and tell that yaksha. Please take your jar back and get rid of it. I also had the jar once." And I am not returned that jar. That is why I am king. <laughs> Understand? That is why I am king. You return the jar and be as a old person. I love. I envy your status. I envy your state. That is why every day morning I wait to see you. Some of I neither had maturity, and now it is too late to return. Now it is too late to return. One guy. One liner. One guy says, "By the time I found out, I have nothing to write. I have started writing books. At, after some time, suddenly I found out I am not nothing to write. I am not that intelligent to write books." Other guy asks, "Did you stop?" "No, no, no. By now I have become too famous." <laughs> so by the time the king gets the clarity, he has to return the jar. Only then he will be contented. The kingdom is created. He is already in the rut. He can't come out. He can't escape. That is the one worst thing. You can't get out of the rut. You are caught once for all over. I have seen. At least in India, many politicians at some time, some way, by mistake or by accident. when they see some enlightened being something clicks in them also because of their experience and feeling of the unfulfillment something clicks in them i myself have seen personally when i tell them are then why don't you start turning your turning your life into a new direction he says no swami ji now if i step down either i will be put in prison or killed i have to play this game till i die because i created already enough of enemies already i created enough of enemies and enmity whoever is unfulfilled or dissatisfied when i am in the when i was in the power is waiting now i have to at least maintain a certain level of power at least i will not be taken revenge i cannot just completely quit and retire the moment i retire i'll be finished so it's like a game king says yes now it is too late to re return please you are you don't get caught in this mess and king says very beautiful word you are head is that yaksha's golden pot how much you put it will never be filled understand how much you put it will never be filled go and return to the yaksha you are head the unfulfillment so anything you put in your head you will see it will take it for granted anything the moment you have it the head will take it for granted when you came to this country you would have had the list of having one house one car one family and certain bank balance all that would have happened in 3 4 years but now you don't celebrate about you achieved that goal you took it for granted and now the yaksha said this working the yaksha's part is working i tell you at least return the head you may, you don't have to return the part but return the head <laughs> person who is filled with that kind of greed will naturally be suffering with yaksha's part what is the key to discipline in spiritual practice is it just americans who have this this problem of lack of discipline no i don't say i don't as far as discipline and immorality concern it is a universal it is not easterner or westerner there is a very beautiful line from padanjali he says after describing the yama the basic understandings of the life ahimsa non violence satya truth asteya non stealing aparigraha 
not possessing more than what you need again if you are possessing more than what you need you are stealing yesterday just yesterday i read a statistics in this country 30 million people are undernourished and 30 million people are suffering with obesity means too much obesity means the obese people have eaten the undernourished people food <laughs> now i was really surprised to see the same number same number that's what when you have more than what is what you need the aparigraha you are stealing it's a steya non possessiveness and above all the brahmacharya means behaving decently having relationship only based on love maybe i can translate the word brahmacharya into a, yesterday i was struggling to translate that word this can be a wonderful translation having relationship only based on love not based on anything else can be that because a person who is having physical relationship only based on love even when he has relationship he will not have the side effects of the immorality side effects of or dangers of the anything else he will have the more deeper settled balanced life anyhow when uh, padanjali describes all these great five vows he makes a statement sarva bhoomya brata very beautiful statement let me translate these understandings are for the whole world for ever vashyakara says like a morality is universal immorality is also universal do not think in the west immorality is more or in the east immorality is more nothing like that both always same and don't think now only it has become more and in those days it was less no in those days there was no cnn or website now we have that's all i don't think there is any other difference because 5000 years ago the harappan in harappan culture if you read their uh, stone writings the what is all the stone whatever they carve in the stone those words it feels like a modern day morning newspaper you know, the newspaper editorial it says nowadays kids are not respecting the parents though there is no morality in the um, uh, place and people are living on their own and nobody is responding nobody is respecting the tradition and spirituality these are all the words written in that stone means 5000 years ago the same problem was there so relax it's a immorality is universal and eternal same way vratam morality sarva the niyama niyama sar also universal and eternal there's no such thing as west or east or those days or nowadays see that those days concept is actually a fantasy when you are young everything was looking great because you are innocent not because everything was great <laughs> because you are you are innocent either you are not aware of what was happening around you or you are not that cunning to judge everybody everything around you this two reason you are not you are not informed and you are not that cunning or judgmental continuously judging everybody now the changes happened in you not <laughs> in the society that is same same drama only is going on here yes, somebody personal question i don't even I'm not even able to read the name. That person can have energy ration. He can ask. What is your view about organ donation? Now I wanted to put this in record. Organ donation is no way disturbing your enlightenment or your spiritual growth. Many people ask me after somebody dies, 
If the organs are donated, will that soul have enlightenment or moksha? Will it not disturb the uh, flow of life? Nothing. No way it will be disturbed. You are not going to wait and see whether your eye, everything is properly burnt <laughs> or properly buried. See the greed. Even after a death, is not leaving. <laughs> the possessiveness over the body, even after a death, it is not leaving. No way it will affect your further journey. Actually, in three chana, you take the next body. You will not even be attending your funeral. <laughs> Understand, by the time you will be attending your birthday celebration somewhere. So you will not even be there for your funeral. So I completely acknowledge, welcome, encourage any organ donation. I wanted this to be on record for our devotees, say, at least for our tradition. There was a lot of discussion. Even the other day I was reading some article in some magazines and books related to Hinduism. Fools were saying that, uh, no, no, uh, the karma of that person who donates the organ will go to the new person, nothing. <laughs> karma is not in your head. Karma is in the system which is operating the head. You are donating only hardware, not software. If an hardware of some computer is taken and fixed in you, you will not have the same software or memory in this new computer. So only if the software is uh, transmitted, you will have the same memory. Mind is software, body is hardware. Donating hardware or the spare parts of the hardware will no way transmit the software. No way transmit the karmas. Karmas are related to software. So be very clear about it. Here is again some personal question. You can ask in the energy darshan. Somebody has put a question about the child abuse and he has given a shocking statistics. I don't know from where the person got the statistics. Like a, in US, over 60% of girls sexually abused before 18 and something like that. Different, different statistics. Maybe, I don't know, different region or something. This problem, I can tell you, because of the pornography, too much of unnecessary fantasies have been put inside the head. If that is banned, the problem will disappear. I actually studied this problem. In India, it is practically nil. Only in the, the cities. Cities are no more part of India. I don't say cities are India. Cities are, cities are no more India. It is a... Anyhow, let us not talk about it. <laughs> and only in cities I am hearing all this. In villages, they don't even have an idea about this. Even idea about this. I think the wrong um, fantasies and ideas going inside. I can tell you one more thing. If the depth of relationship can be created, the man will have the fulfillment. One nice thing, in India, even if you fight, they will stay together till the end just for fighting. <laughs> no, wonderful. What else? You see, at least you will not have a loneliness. You will have, you will have somebody to fight with. <laughs> see, that is the only way they know how to relate. That's all. That is okay. No, really. Uh, it's not that the people who fight, it's not that couples, just because they are fighting with each other, they can be separated. No, if they stay even few days separately, they miss the fight. <laughs> they miss the fight. So I tell you, the depth of relationship really brings a kind of fulfillment, even if it was fighting based. So, I really feel there is a a strong reason why our masters decided not to allow divorce as a social custom. Even if there, is a, if there was a fight, there was a disrespect on both sides, that divorce was never allowed and that was never 
a custom or part of life. I have seen. I have seen even in the families in which I was born and brought up. The husband and wife, not only they will not sleep in the same room, they will not even talk to each other. They wouldn't have uh, slept in the same room for 20, 30 years, but they will not go for divorce. They may, even while they crash, they will only give a look. <laughs> but husband will never bother to bring a, a sari and leave it in the room. Or he will never miss to bring the money and put it in the kitchen. And wife will never miss to keep the food on the table. At least there is something. It goes on. <laughs> it goes on. So sometimes I can say that kind of a even that kind of relationship brings a sort of a fulfillment and there is no loneliness, you see. You don't end up in the extreme loneliness. I can say the extreme loneliness and all is one reason why we start perverting or diverting our love. Let's enter into the Sutra. Devi, enter etheric presence pervading far above and below your form. This is a Nitya Sutra. Means you are supposed to internalize and practice whole day. Morning till night. Let me describe, explain exactly the word etheric. That is the key word here. Understand, you are not just the body as you think. It is only one part of you. Physical body made out of flesh and bones is one part of you. There is a second layer. The air which you inhale and exhale. Understand? The prana which goes inside and comes out. That is the second layer, second part of your body. To kill somebody, you don't have to even poison the body. If you are just your body, if you have to be killed, your poison has to be added inside your body. But if poison is added, poisonous gas is added even in the room, the person will die. Means, your boundary is not just the skin. You are not ending where your skin ends. The pranic layer, the pranic layer is like a maybe if you inhale and exhale deeply from which distance you can smell. For example, you can smell some people may be able to smell any smell which is there six feet distance. For some people they can smell even 20 feet. For some people fortunately who kept the nose very sharp. In the young age, if you are not suppressed, your nose will be very sharp. Your sense of smell will be very sharp. They can smell even 70-80 feet. The distance you can smell is your pranic layer. That area, yeah, if it is polluted or corrupted directly, you will be affected. Then you may think, if my nose is too sharp, then I have to maintain too much area. <laughs> Understand? Pollution, even if you don't maintain, it is going to affect the health. If your nose is sharp, at least you will know you are inhaling polluted air. You are inhaling polluted air, nothing else. The distance you can smell will be your pranic layer, prana sharira. Understand? In the physical layer, the distance between two persons is more. In the prana sharira, many of our prana sariras are overlapping. Means the distance between two persons is less. That is why sometime when you sit next to somebody, you will feel uncomfortable. With somebody, you will feel very relaxed, very restful. In the meditation class, I have seen, before meditation, they will not feel any uncomfort to sit next to somebody. 
But after meditation, because the sensitivity has grown, they will just move out of that person. Move out of that person. Because the, now they can feel the pranic layer. Now the boundary is overlapping. Animals are very conscious and very intelligent about the pranic layer. You can see in the zoos, if the other animal enters the pranic layer, that's enough, this girl will, mm, <laughs> will be showing the face. And early morning, if you see Indian streets, I have seen the dogs will go around and ensure their pranic layer is protected by pissing in the light bulbs. <laughs> and they will go around and ensure that their pranic layer is, their boundaries are protected. Anybody who enters inside the boundary itself is enough, this fellow will get ready for fight. Without moving away, when you close your eyes, is mental layer. For example, if you close your eyes and able to visualize this hall in one single frame of mind, in one single visualization, if you are able to visualize this hall, this is the distance of your mental layer. For example, if you have to visualize the parking lot, you may have to leave this frame and go there. You may have to unclutch from this frame and visualize the parking lot. Kids can visualize at least 10 times more space than you. That is why many questions they ask, you are not able to answer. Understand? If you are in an open space, if you are in, a, in front of an ocean or a vast hilly region, how much area you can visualize? You may be able to visualize some 30 degree vision. This much area only you will be able to visualize in one picture in your heart, in your inner space. If you have to visualize the other side, you have to move this out only the, as a second thought. Or as a second visualization only you can visualize. But with the kids, they can easily visualize 120 degree. 120 degree. And especially the child kids who doesn't go to school, who are not abused by the so-called verbal, verbal, verbal based, word based education system. Logic based education system. Of course, I can't say it's a Western because now Eastern, Western, everywhere, logic based education system. The kids who are not abused, the based, abused by the logic based education system, they will have 360 degree visualization. Understand? When I talk about my first experience, I talk about this only. I was able to visualize, I opened up to the visualization of 360 degree. Kids, Till you finish them making like you. <laughs> Till you give birth to your software into them. When you give birth, you give birth only to hardware, your hardware in them. Only genetically they are affected. When you put your education system in them, you affected them mentally also. You affected them mentally too. Till they are affected mentally. Till they are abused. By the, I wanted to use this word again and again. By the logic based education, which is the worst damage done to the human mind. When the logic based education system is given, they lose the ability of visualization. Seeing things under one visualization. The creativity or innovation is lost. I tell you, Along with a verbal, word-based or a logic-based education, if your kids can do little meditation or this carving, anything directly done by using the hand, carving or painting or completely involving eyes and the hands, they can bring the visualization energy back, efficiency back to their system. If that can be done, it will really take care without abusing the kids. <coughs> Anyhow, mental layer means the area you are able to visualize without any need to move away. For example, 
if you are visualizing now, able to visualize now this whole hall, one more important thing. Most of you may not even be able to visualize this whole hall at a time. Once you, even the whole hall, if you see, you will see first people, then you will see the screen. Even for this hall, you may need two, three movement. The area which you are able to visualize without moving is the mental layer boundary. Mental layer boundary. One more important thing. Like a, if Annamaya Kosha has to be killed, poisoning Annamaya Kosha is needed. Through Pranamaya corruption, poisoning the, polluting the air is needed. In the mental layer, Anybody who is inside that mental layer, his ideas will go into your system without your editing. That's an important thing. So, corrupting ideas are put in your head. That is why whatever ad goes on in the television enters your head. Because that time, that becomes your mental layer. That becomes part of your mental layer. Hardly 10% you logically analyze the news which is read out to you in the TV or the informations which are told to you through the TV. Because in the TV, in 10 minutes, almost you become part of that mental layer. That becomes part of your mental layer. That is why 90% of the words and ideas which is told through you, told to you through the TV, just goes inside. Corrupting 2-3 TV channels is enough to pollute the whole mental setup of particular country, certain country. Fourth layer, very important, etheric layer. Understand? Mahadeva talks about the fourth layer here. Means layer of emotions, sentiments. Here the boundary will be bigger. Here the boundary will be even between USA to India. If your relatives are there in the India, the distance is too much. Even if they are there, if they are sick, the suffering will be there for you. If somebody dies, the suffering will be there for you. The etheric layer is too big. Understand? Physical layer is only six feet. Your skin is the boundary. Pranic layer is the area up, area up to up to the you can smell, up to the area you can smell is the pranic layer, boundary. Mental layer is the area you are able to visualize in one frame, one visualization. That is mental layer. Etheric layer is based on emotional connection. It does not have boundary. Does not have boundary. It is only based on the love or emotional connection you have with people, the feeling you have with people, the connection you have with people, an important thing you need to understand about the feeling or the connection you carry with the people. Even unconsciously it affects you, even if you don't know they are sick, Suddenly you will be low, why you don't know? Then you will get the telephone call, they are sick. When you are really connected, even without logic, without knowingly, even if you are not informed through your, to your conscious mind, your unconscious will start suffering. Mahadeva says, start feeling the etheric presence, understand? When you start feeling the etheric presence of you, means where all your energy is invested, all your emotional connections are like your energy investments, you can easily unclutch yourself from the sufferings. If you can find out all the etheric presence connections, your etheric layer connections, you can easily unclutch and enter into the enlightenment or the energy place, energy plane where there is no 
bondage where there is no disturbance if food poison happens your anna the physical plane can be corrupted if the air pollution happens your pranamaya kosha can be disturbed if a thought pollution happens your manomaya kosha can be disturbed if emotional ideology pollution happens your etheric layer can be disturbed understand somebody can be tortured or prison here you will be suffering without even you directly getting involved with it you can be tortured through remote control way that is what is etheric layer is all about many time i have seen people feel etherically connected means emotionally connected maybe the word etheric is too mysterious or mystical if you are emotionally connected to the people who are back in your home or if you are emotionally connected to people some group of some religion some group or some language whenever some problem comes for them you are here suffering i have seen people suffer for no reason i am all for serving lovingly and compassionately if a tsunami hits serve compassionately nothing wrong but don't start suffering people think only by suffering you can serve no if you are suffering you will not have energy to serve you will not have energy to serve stop suffering have empathy empathy means feeling they are suffering and immediately working to remove it sympathy means suffering along with them empathy means working to remove their suffering you are not supposed to suffer with them i have seen if tamilians suffer there here the tamilians feel suffering if the hindus suffer there here hindus feel suffering somewhere if muslims are suffering here the muslims feel suffer if you have etheric connection emotional bondage you invite you accept you are waiting for more and more suffering mahadeva says feel your etheric presence with whom all you feel connected just for 10 days try this technique feel you are present to all the people with whom you are feelingly connected you are emotionally connected feel like a light beam in the form of a big light you are connected to all the people with whom you emotionally feel connected for example if your parents are there in india and if mostly none of you feel connected emotionally if at all you feel emotionally connected just visualize continuously your body is huge enough to accommodate the whole india inside and they are there inside it it may look very funny but in 10 days you will have so many new revelation understand so many new revelation how you imbibe bring invite new new unnecessary sufferings when you feel connected to them even if they are not suffering if they are going through some incident which you think as suffering you will create suffering for you many time they will be completely free relaxed resting but what you think as suffering if they go through what you will do you will feel the suffering and you will create suffering for them by forcing it on them no 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 this cannot happen to you we do same thing in the name of love i call that as a loving torture <laughs> now i go to, i go through many time from disciples especially when they feed they think if i eat more they will get more punya based on my weight they will get more punya i don't know then what will happen to me see the suffering which we invite unnecessarily unconsciously the moment it is brought to your conscious awareness it will disappear not only with parents and relatives i am talking many ways you will you may be connected to the, your religious people or your community people your group of people or your language people you will have the common identity connections 
understand conditioning is one of the dangerous thing if you are connected to the whole world that is wonderful you will never bring suffering for yourself because when you expand to the whole world without boundary there is no ideology based connection that does not belong to etheric that is that belongs to cosmic body etheric body means emotion based connection conditioning based connection conditioning based love conditioning based connection will always lead to calamity will always lead to danger will always lead to violence because the other part the part which you excluded naturally you will be violent towards them <coughs> naturally you will be violent angry towards them i have seen how the conditioning brings so much of suffering unconsciously to a person and the suffering which he enjoys or cherishes adds creates more violence and suffering understand ego means working based on pain body and expanding the boundary of pain body is ego if you are making some decisions because of the people whom you think is your own is suffering all your decisions to alleviate their suffering will add only more suffering to the planet earth you may add suffering to somebody else and that person naturally will add suffering to the group which you are thinking as your own say i for i will only end up making the whole world blind you will remove his side and he will remove it as a revenge one person from your party and all you guys will remove now one one person from their party if continuously this goes on where will it end it will make the whole world blind that's all ending place will be whole world blind mahadeva says enter etheric presence pervading far above understand he knows i think people are going to live too far and have the etheric connection that's why he say he does not say above far above and far below you are farm your farm may be the center but with whoever you feel connected emotionally if some particular language people are a religious people are a relative are community anything condition based connection condition based connection 10 days from morning till night be aware of all of them as a part of your own body visualize you have a huge light body body of them are inside you as part maybe looking very funny feeling very funny you may think how this can lead me to enlightenment you do not know you do not know with how many conditionings you are suffering in unconscious level only when you practice this you will realize all the layers and layers of conditionings with which you are suffering unconsciously they will all come up to consciousness the moment they come up to the consciousness naturally you will be unclutched from them you will be relieved from them you will be relaxed from them understand the sutra is very powerful may not directly now you may not feel how can this open enlightenment till you open the door you will not be aware what is inside the building i have seen so many people when they come inside our temple when they open the vedic temple door it is hardly 7 feet door they never imagine anything they can't imagine what is inside the moment they open the door inside and second door and look inside god ah huh? they get the shock because psychologically you always feel inside you will see things only up based on the height of the entrance if the entrance is 7 feet inside also you all already imagine or come to a pre conclusion prejudice you are going to see only the things which are taller equal to the side 
you never imagine only when you see suddenly you have the shock god what is this how did it all come inside how all these deities are there the moment only they when they see inside they get the shock that is why i just wanted to agree really wanted to name that place as a shock spot <laughs> the moment they open their eyes oh god it's such a shock till you see you do not know what you are going to see with that key same way till you practice for 10 days you do not know how many layers of your own conditioning you are going to experience with this technique you will see two big things much more than what you expected it is a very wonderful technique the next sutra is a continuity actually it is a same sutra only one small difference technique the difference in technique put mind stuff in such inexpressible fineness above below and in your heart understand the same technique in first technique mahadeva says experience the etheric presence above and below you in the second technique he says it's actually a developed version after you practice the first you have to do second you can't do second directly he says be aware of all the etheric connections you have means the etheric bodies boundaries you have along with that be aware of your boundary also here you need to put awareness in two place let me describe exactly what mahadeva means in the first sutra he says just put your awareness on mind that is enough i will automatically get dismantled because i has no individual base except the mind the second he says sometime you would have co collected a very strong eye you don't even know the corruption the depth of corruption which exists in, a, in that eye beyond conditioning you may be having some ideas so put your awareness on that also understand two different technique maybe the second technique for real thinkers real thickets first technique is remember be aware expand to all the psychological emotional etheric connections which brings you suffering i have seen many times see if you can stop accumulating etheric anger and etheric lust that is enough you are liberated because the anger or lust which you can contain in this body will never be harmful to you will never be harmful to you i have seen people carry the anger which directly is not involved to their life if somebody is skilled somewhere who is supposed to be the community in which he is born brought up here is blood will boil when they read the news let him suffer i need i know you should have it sitting in front of tv they will be shouting <coughs> accumulating the anger more than what you need to run your day to day life is the danger accumulating the lust more than what you need to run your day to day life somebody some celebrity is dancing in the tv and already you accumulated the lust which you can't directly use in your day to day life which is useless in your day to day life that lust is not going to be useful but you accumulated that lust naturally that is going to stay inside you as a blockage if you have the lust with the person with whom you are living which you can directly express means useful to your day to day life useful to your day to day life accumulate lust or anger 
useful to your day to day life that will never be dangerous that will never be dangerous i tell you it will only help you to run your day to day life with excitement somebody goes to doctor and says doctor i want to live 100 100 years what all should i do doctor asks do you drink he said no do you smoke no do you fool around date around he says no i live a straight simple pure life then doctor asks then why do you want to live 100 years <laughs> understand i am not saying disconnect or destroy everything accumulate the anger which is needed only for your day to day life you may need anger to run your business you may need little shouting to maintain your office discipline you may need little lust to have the excite to add excitement in your relationship you may need little lust to keep the love or to keep the family going on have the lust have the anger have the emotions which are directly needed for your day to day life not etheric seeing some some particular dimension male or female who are called models jumping somewhere if you accumulate the lust which is not going to be directly straight away useful in your day to day life you are creating blockages you are creating disturbance in your etheric system understand be aware of even all those attachments if you have your hero if you are fan of somebody 15 days remember that person is part of your etheric body because all those things are also directly connected with whoever you are attached remember all those things as part of your body for 15 days suddenly you will see how much of suffering is added into your life by them not directly by them your emotional attachment to them your attachment to them same way whoever you don't like for no reason you don't like some somebody all right you have you don't like that is true you are attracted can it do anything to the person directly no it is not directly going to be useful in your day to day life i have seen people sitting with the newspaper and reading the mortuary columns and feeling this fellow he needs this as if you are never going to die as if your photo is never going to appear in that mortuary column maybe it may not appear in that column in the newspaper but you are not it's not that you are not going to die at least somebody has given a advertisement for him in the mortuary column i have seen means vengeance which is not directly useful in the day to day life lust which is not directly useful in your day to day life if you can accumulate the ang- anger lust all the emotions which is directly needed for your everyday life and spend it your life will be like a the barber before finding the golden jar it will be contented fulfilled wonderful but the moment you find the golden jar and try to fulfill it like collecting the anger and collecting the lust collecting the violence which is not directly useful in your day to day life which you can't spend the big problem with the uh, yakshas jar golden part is you will never feel like taking it out and spending you will only feeling like feel like filling it same way the collected anger and lust which is not directly in your li- useful in your life you will never be able to spend it you will be only accumulating it and anybody who is working based on the accumulated anger and lust without reason without the direct use will continue to suffer continue to suffer continue to suffer because all their decisions will be made on the 
pseudo anger, pseudo lust, which is not directly useful in their life. Be aware, two technique, understand? Be aware, first 10 days, only about the etheric body. That itself will take your awareness. You will not be aware of you also. Just be aware of all the etheric connections and the body around the world, all your likes and dislikes, love and hatred, all the connections. Remember, everything is inside you as part of your body. Move with the same visualization for 10 days. You will see so many understandings and revelations and great spiritual clicks happening in you. So many initiations will open up. Second thing, second part, if in the first part itself, if you achieve the truth, then no need for second. Otherwise, the second part, be aware of you also, center also, then so many other things can happen. Put mind stuff in such inexpressible fineness above, below and in your heart. That is the only word added. The key word added is and in your heart. That is the essence. Understand? Both techniques are today fortunately part of the same sutra. Because I am seeing many of you are tired after attending two long days of workshop. So, I think Shiva knows maybe. <laughs> the after the two day workshop, the sutra is going to be taken. So, he gave both the techniques in one sutra. So that you don't have to sit for more time. I will tell the essence in few lines. Visualize. All the love, hatred, emotional relationships which you have in your life as part of your etheric body means light body. Visualize you have a huge light body. If you have somebody who is really emotionally connected to you in India, visualize you have a huge body which extends up to India and that person is inside that body. Ten days carry this visualization. Let all the emotional, hatred or loving connections be inside your etheric body. And if you experience the ultimate click with this technique, go ahead with this. If not, the second thing, add. Along with that, be aware of your center also. Your center also. Then you will see the new layers of click opening up. So, let you, of course, tomorrow we have the last day of Shiva Sutra. So, I welcome you all to be here tomorrow to enjoy the last day of Shiva Sutra here. Because I will be doing the remaining few sutras. In, maybe in the ashram, Indian ashram, I will complete it. So, formally, the public lecture Shiva Sutra will be ending tomorrow. It took almost two years. I remember 2006, January we started and 2007, December. It took two years to comment on at least around 100 sutras. We will be finishing the public discourses on Shiva Sutras tomorrow. I welcome you all. So, let these sutras be internalized by you and practiced by you. Let you all achieve and radiate the eternal bliss, Nityananda. Thank you. Shiva.